What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at a Black Diamond amplifier. What is Black Diamond? Well, it's $110 right now on Amazon. Let's take a closer look and see what this thing's about. Yeah, it has DS18 on the box because this is distributed and made by, I believe, DS18. Here it is, Black Diamond. Open it up. There is the manual. Have several different models. Today we're going to be looking at one specific model, a monoblock. Comes with a warranty card and we like it loud. Some mounting screws. Remote base cable or telephone cable if you have an old school phone. And here's a remote base knob. It is metal. It has a nice potentiometer and it has a clip light. Can I get a cheer for Black Diamond? Hands up. Throw your hands up in the air. Swim around like you just don't care. Good job. We like this base knob. On the back of the amplifier box, you can see 2550 watts, but then also 900 at 1 ohm, 600 at 2 ohms, 350 at 4 ohms. Those are RMS numbers. Here's the amp outside the box. It looks pretty nice, actually, to me, about the size of my hand. And look at the inputs and outputs. Here on one end, you'll see the remote base connection, a clip LED, bass boost from 0 to 18 dB. It does not tell us the frequency, unfortunately. Subsonic from 10 hertz to 55 hertz. Low pass filter from 250 down to 50 hertz. Phase 0, 180. Gain control and then RCA inputs. On the opposite end, not a whole lot going on. We just have one speaker output which takes about 12 gauge wire. We have two 40 amp fuses. A power and protect LED light. Then we have four gauge for the power and ground as well as a remote terminal there which is around uh, 12 gauge as well just like the speaker terminals as far as dimensions 7.9 inches long 5.5 inches wide millimeter equivalents are there too for you outside the u.s as far as the height 1.9 inches or 48 millimeters now it's time to fire up the good old smd demore engineering amplifier dyno so we can try out this amp see what kind of rms power output we get before we do that make sure you smash me a thumbs up Check out links in the video description for some Wilson Audio merch. Now let's do the amp. 4 ohms. It's a monoblock amp. Rated 350 watts at 14.4 volts. Let's try it out here. See what we get. Oh, a little bit shy. Yeah, so we measured 334 up to 1% THD. Now let's try it up to clipping, which is the uncertified test. And here you can see, yes, we were able to get the rated power, 352 at 14.35 volts. Now we will reset the dyno, try the dynamic track. 40 hertz pulse tone going into the amp. See if we can get that 350. Right at it. 349 at 14.34. If we had that 14.4, I, get, I guarantee it would get it. Now let's check out the efficiency, 87% at 4 ohms. Very good, but it's also needed for an amp this small. 2 ohms, the amplifier is rated 600 watts RMS power. Let's try a certified test first, up to 1% distortion, and whoa, we're shy. 553 at 14.48. Now let's see if it's like the 4 ohm test, and uncertified, can it reach that 600 watts? Uh, yes, it can. There you go. 620 watts, 14.4 volts. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Now let's try the dynamic power. And there you go. It's got some dynamic power. Got a little bit more juice. 663 watts, 14.5 volts. What about that efficiency, though, at 2 ohms? 76% is what we measured. That is about what we expect for a class D at 2 ohms. Now let's try the 1 ohm test rated 900 watts, 14.4 volts. Again, certified. Can we get that number certified? No, we're shy. 95 watts, 805 at 14.38. Now, what do you guys think? Is it going to make it uncertified? Can it be just like the other test? Uh, yes, 921 at 14.2. So this amp appears to be rated at 
clipping instead of 1% THD, that's okay. They just need to tell us in the manual. It's that clipping, in my opinion. Dynamic power, 958 watts at 14.18. What about that efficiency? 73% at 1 ohm. That is about what we would expect. Now, what about the results? I would say it's pretty impressive for the money. You can see all the ratings here. You can pause this if you want to see it, but basically it met rated power at clipping, but not quite um, using the certified test. You can also see the 8 ohm test there if you'd like. Now let's hook this up to the Savard 8 inch subs. Find out. Do it, bump, do. Okay, friends, here we have the Mighty Might Black Diamond. DIA 2550.1D, and my neighbor is mowing his grass, of course, right when I want to do the demo. Let's try the do it bump though test, and we have the base knob here so we can see when we get some clipping. This is a metal base knob. I kind of like it. It's got a clip light for a hundred dollar amp. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. So let's see how it does. Let's try the woofer test. Now we'll check out what's inside, but for that, let's heat the amp up so we can check out those thermals. We're going to check the thermals of the amp, but first we're going to heat it up. So I've got the amp hooked up. I've got my gun here. We're going to check the external temperature first, and then I'll get out the FLIR so we can see the thermal imaging. But what I wanted to do was uh, hook it up to the dyno, and let's turn the amp on, which it's on. And then let's, we got a little stopwatch over here. So once I start the track, got the DD1 test track at 40 Hertz. You can see we got 12 Watts going in. Use the base knob as a volume. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the little clock here. And I'm gonna crank it up. Let's do 500 watts, 485. See how long it takes to heat up this amplifier. Again, I've got the clock running. So there we go. We've been almost two minutes at right at 500 watts. So that's about 60% power or so of this amp. Oh, there we go, 120. Yeah, she getting hot now. Woo! Okay, that's enough. All right, so let's turn it down. But I just turned it all the way down. Only two watts, 
only pulling one amp. About two minutes is what we did. So two minutes at 60% power. Now let me take it apart and we'll take off the bottom and we'll check out the thermals. All right, let's check those temps. Oh yeah, 133 in the transformer. 140, 143 it looks like on that choke. There you got cool thermal image of the whole amp. All right, so here you can see the gut shot of this black diamond amplifier. We're gonna look at the caps first. 25 volt, 4700 microfarad for the input filtering. And for the rails, we have 63 volt, 2200 microfarad. And here's just again as an overall shot, typical class D mini amplifier. The one thing you may notice is this little driver board kind of bothers me a little bit because it has the caps kind of uh, scattered amongst it. Anyway, let's talk about the good stuff. First off, affordable. It's a compact size. I would say it's a very efficient operation. Has four gauge power inputs. Has a very nice base knob with a clip light. Variable subsonic filter, which is always a plus. And it withstood the abuse, and if you stick around all the way to the end of the video, you'll see what I mean by that, because we're going to put it through a real torture test. What about things that could be better? No Tiffany RCAs are not really expected on a $100 amp. Why do they say 2,550 watts max? I don't know. It only has one speaker output, even though it's a mono amp, it's nice to have two. It didn't meet the rated power at 1% THD, unfortunately. And what about the brand stigma? Never heard of Black Diamond, have you? Until you watch this video, lol, lol, lol. Anyway, <laughs> here's the amp. Overall, I thought it was very good for the money. I really like the bass knob. It sounded good on the subwoofers. Very small. Um, again, stick around until after the end credits here so you can see what this amp did because it did some more stuff at the very end, which is pretty impressive. Thanks as always for watching. Till big next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Thanks for sticking around for after the credits here. We're going to try three things. We're going to check the clip light on the remote, the 0.8 ohm dyno test, as well as extended thermal testing. First up, let's check out that clip light. See how conservative it is. I'm going to try this again and hold them a little bit closer to each other. Let's start up the 40 hertz track. Got a 2 ohm load on the amp. What you'll notice here is the clip light comes on before the dyno clip light, which is a good thing. I'll see how it kind of lightens up. So it starts kind of dull and then it lightens up, but yeah, it comes on way before that one does. Amp is rated at one ohm. Let's see if it can do 0.8. Let's try it out. All right, let's try this amp at 0.8. It's not rated at any load under one ohm. Black Diamond, DIA 2550.1D. We're just gonna try certified and then dynamic tests. We're not gonna do uncertified. Here we go, up to 1% THD. All right, so it stopped at 760, so power goes down. I think the amp actually shut off. I think it has a good protection circuit built in. Let's see what it does, 0.8 dynamic. Yep. It's not really doing that. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to take it up to thermal, so we're going to keep trying. I'm going to let's reset this and start it over, even though the amp is already way hot. You can see we're at 32 watts. Let's crank it up. Woo, 941 watts.
I cannot believe this thing is still going. Let's reset that and make sure we're still at 941 because I've turned it down just a little bit. Uh, we're right at 800 watts. When does it go into thermal? Whoop, heard something. What was that? Is that a fuse? Oh, thermal. Okay, turn it down. We finally got to thermal. See the red light there? And let's get the flare so we can see how hot it is. Whoa, look at that choke. Two, over 250 degrees. Right about 160 there on the transistor. Yeah, boy, she's smoking. But it did go into thermal, just like it's supposed to. Woo, she's a hot cookie.